what's good y'all it is your boy back with another banger make sure y'all hit the like button subscribe for real hit the like button we are aiming today we aiming for a hundred hundred likes and i got y'all today we are reacting to pinky thomas confronted tyson now one of the reasons why i wanted to react to this is well it's for numerous reasons one is because it's mike fucking tyson and whenever i react to mike tyson it's gonna be a fire ass video of him beating a nigga up checking a nigga knocking him out because he did some goofy shit and because his nigga name is Pinky Thomas. My guy. You really talk shit to Mike Tyson when your name Pinky? You go by Pinky Thomas. Try to rob me. Nigga, I'm Pinky. That nigga had me scared, but I held my own. Fuck that. I know that's not your real name. But you go by Pinky Thomas, my guy. Like, you can't talk shit about a nigga when he, uh, when he go by Iron Mike Tyson. You can't talk shit. My name Pinky, bro. Come on, dude. I mean, I've seen punches, but I've never heard of them. They were the loudest. Low. You hit the harness, that man was just like made of cement or something. They made such noises. Danny. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fight Recap here on BLTV Classic. Mike Tyson is in a fighting mood. No, no, no shit. We want to our previous videos documenting Tyson's rise to the title as season one. And now, we'll cover his championship reign in what will be an unofficial season two, Tyson's Reign of Terror. I made 11 defenses for my title. For three and a half years making 11 defenses, I'm up there in an all-time reign. Right. Iron Mike fought an array of top True. competition during this He hit him so but hard, he punched him in this direction. He sent back that the man made his second That's tough. Things. Picklin, Pinky Thomas. After the bell ring, I have no respect for him at all. Damn. It was a matchup guaranteed to display elite boxing skills from each end of the spectrum, with Tyson's aggressive peekaboo style mixing it up against Thomas's classic boxing technique. But his weave Let's technique, I might steal. No, cause that shit is crazy. Pinky painted red. That shit. <laughs> that shit crazy. This is Mike Tyson at 56 years of age. Still displaying excellent form and technique to set up a punch that, during his boxing career, became his most deadly secret weapon to incapacitate Ooh, his own. That uppercut. uppercut. All right. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh my lord! You heard it! What the? You heard it, dude! The uppercut you is one heard of the most effective it. ways of breaking an opponent's high guard, striking from an angle that passes straight through an opponent's gloves, targeting one of the most vulnerable spots on the human anatomy, the jaw. But there is a reason it's statistically the least utilized punch in every boxer's repertoire. It's situational and high risk, right. given the nature of how much surface area is exposed. If you get caught trying to throw one of them, and ooh, it might be over. is where Tyson's countless hours of practicing drills on the pads separated him from the pack, making his uppercut. Okay, I might do that a lot in this video, because that shit just raw, I ain't gonna didn't lie. See coming, but expected an entirely different shot to land altogether. I'm the master to pinpoint my, my shot is so accurate and so precise. You only have to go back a couple of fights to get an understanding of Tyson's shrewd strategy, with his fight against Jose Revolta being the standout example of its devastating outcome. I, I remember that. I've seen that. Oh my god! The this fact that you heard both. Of Tyson's one of them was just a body shot. And look at the amusement on Revolta's face once Jeez. he got back to his feet told the whole story. He wasn't expecting that shot to land. Low. That's because of how Tyson disguised the follow-up from his right hook to the body as the second in succession, making Revolta drop his left arm to defend the punch mm -hmm. he always intended. Boom! Without the opponent seeing the punch, and those are the punches that do the most damage. Tyson did this repeatedly throughout the fight, uh, varying the set uh, ever uh, so slightly uh, each time, uh, catching Revolta uh, off guard and uh, through again. However, Rivalta may have been one of the toughest guys Tyson had ever faced, but he wasn't the most technically sound. Whether his body uppercut combo would work against someone with polished skills and a high fight IQ remained to be seen. That I had the fastest hands and the fastest feet, and there Pink was no way I was going Okay, now before you even go on, I know I was talking shit about him like in the beginning of the video, but y'all know I, I just be talking shit, bro. These niggas are professional boxers. They can knock damn near any, not damn near, they can knock anybody the fuck out. So don't take none of them saying serious. Because if y'all think I'm fighting a boxer fair, you're crazy. You know, you know what I'm saying? But History has remembered Pinklin Thomas as another random heavyweight champion between the eras of two Ooh, my, my right jab. Ooh, 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 Ooh. That right jab, Nash. Nash. I'm sorry. And take a deep dive into the heavyweight division of the early 80s. The man who entered the ring in all pink. I was like, I know what I'm doing. Okay, I'm sorry. I stopped. I stopped. <laughs> Skillful rising champions, which is Damn, all the more startling once you consider the depth he carried for much of his professional career. 
I was a typical youth, turned bad. At 12, I was running a 100 yard dash in 10 5. By the age of 14, I was a heroin addict. Damn! You heard that right. Heroin addiction, which, as you can imagine, is an extremely rare occurrence among professional athletes, especially ones that need to maintain the physical strength of a heavyweight prize fighter. And this wasn't and something he just dabbled with in his teens. Thomas was an addict. <laughs> okay, I'm career, sorry, I'm sorry. And you can see how high he was during the few scarce media interviews he did back in the day. And I prove to the world that I am a superior boxer, and I at first glance, it's easy to assume that Pinkman was perhaps carrying the effects of what thousands of hundreds can do to the brain. In fact, as you'll see later, he was just high as a kite, with the ability to articulate himself in a much more orderly manner. <laughs> Damn! Just cause he hot don't mean he can't throw him off, fuck! Damn! Surprising. Woo! Eating with the same, with the same hand! He's do it! Do it! By 1985, Dude, like, what the fuck? In a few short years of experience under his belt, Thomas had already beaten guys like Quick Tillis and Alonzo Ratliff before swiftly stepping up the level to compete with championship quality fighters such as Mike Weaver and Tim Witherspoon. You know, everyone claims mm -hmm. that Holmes got the best jab in the business, and uh, I wanted to show that I had a, I have a hell of a jab too, and mine is more powerful. When you hear that a fighter's best quality is his jab, you usually assume he's more of a boring, safety-first type of fighter. But in Pinklin's case, he had built a reputation as a proud fighter that gave his opponents just enough to make things interesting, while always remaining in control due to his superior boxing IQ. I'm so impressed with his jab, now I'm impressed with his right hand. In a nutshell, Thomas was the complete all-rounder, with little to no flaws as a boxer. Oh, nah, he was he like punched that. hard and fast, with swift feet and the intelligence we, to we. at the right time. What's up, buddy? never fought anyone of Tyson's caliber, but outside of possibly Holmes, there weren't many fighters at this time that carried that genuine final boss aura. That was my favorite Tyson celebration. Well, who's got more Never knocking that guy and just go to the corner. Uh, who punches harder? Pinkman. Uh, who got the best left hand? Pinkman. It sounds good. I mean, there's too many things against him for him to win. He's going to get knocked out late round, but a heck of a fight. Fight. Well, Thomas said that Tyson has fought the C class fighter. Tyson met Thomas in front of 13,000 fans at the Hilton Resort in Las Vegas. Even as a champion, the ring attire stayed the same. No robe, no socks, don't give black a fuck. Trucks, black shoes, focus on the war ahead. Well, no bad idea against Mike Tyson. Tyson is a 6-1 favorite. Oh my god, you already heard the first punch. Damn! Damn! Oh my lord! Oh my god, he hit him in the same spot twice! Oh my lord! A fast, Jeez. aggressive start. Mike. The tipster! We got the man in here, got the tipster. brother. What's happening? We got the tipster! Got the tipster! That nigga Mike is so psyched, dude. The way he was able... Bro, the first punch, he said... Doom! Like, it is... Bro, already was like... It's, all, it's over. Whenever a nigga get cracked and they first instinct is to swing. Arthur Tyson wasn't unusual, but this was different. Mm. There were no mm. full out set of punches, just straight knockout shots from the head. Oh my god. A doctor's you sure? after the but. first round ended but. brought out the very best in the legendary trainer, Angela Dundee. I've never seen an angel that angry of you. Okay. You wanted this. Good little couple jabs. Ooh, yeah, that was two good jabs. Two good jabs. Okay. Tyson letting him do this. You can tell. He's not swinging. It was now Kevin Rudy's time to find some inspiring words for his man. And whatever he said undoubtedly had an effect as Mike came out the fifth just as he did in the first with bad intentions. Woo! Left hander! Left hander! Right hander! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my lord! Oh my lord! Here it comes! Oh the ball's coming! The ball's coming! Oh! Oh my god! Did you have to hit him that many times, right? Bro, he hit him like 20 times! Thomas defenseless as Tyson moved in with three more flush shots that finished with an ass that no heavyweight was getting up from. 
when he gets so much uh, leverage behind each punch. However, Thomas boxed well, and that was acknowledged by Mike in their joint yeah, post fight interview. Mike used to always do that. You deserve it. Thomas took some time after the Tyson loss, but ran straight into the next big thing in the banner. Holy field of honor's return, suffering an equally taxing defeat that triggered the downfall and eventual retirement a few years later. After boxing, Thomas got clean, and as of this video's release, has been kicking conditions ass for 30 years. The one and only Pinkland Thomas. Great to see you as always. Hey, uh, thank you, man. You don't have to compliment me that well. I mean, well, I really appreciate it, though. His speech and overall engagement and conversation is at a much higher level than it was while he was in his 20s, which fortunately for him wasn't the case for many others that shared the ring with him. Man! I'm proud that bro was able to kick his addiction because that is something very, very serious. Um... Man, uh, if y'all want another Tyson video, let me know, because cause it's, cause it's coming, you know what I'm saying? Thank you for all the support, 100 likes, and search key.